Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in this episode we will be looking at some top 10 tips to grow beautiful Tropicana Gold. This is a variety of the larger canna lily plant which is not a true lily. They belong to the ginger heliconia family and have rhizomes that are rich in starch and is edible and is also used as fodder for livestock. This is said to be a native of tropical parts of Central America, Mexico, etc. But its nativity is still contested. This is a perennial plant. It's a common landscape plant in lots of gardens in India, but this Tropicana variety is quite new to a lot of us. So there are three types of Tropicana. One is this gold, the other is a burgundy colored foliage and another that is dark red or almost black in color. The other common cannas have solid green foliage like this. There are dwarf varieties like this one here. So in this episode, let us focus on the Tropicana gold. So you obviously would have guessed why it is called so because of the striking tiger striped foliage with green and yellow prominent streaks. That's why the name gold. If you don't get full sun in your area, then you can simply grow this plant under shade for its spectacular foliage. So now let us look at some Tropicana growing tips. The growing conditions for all cannas are the same. Sunlight. We always start with the power of the sun because the sun is sustenance for all living forms on earth. This plant loves the full sun and the more blooms you desire, the more sun it must get. So a full sun exposure is absolutely important. Watering. The plant likes its watering to be consistent, which means that they must be watered every day during summer without fail. These could get stressed if underwatered. Any stress due to underwatering or overwatering will show on their leaves in the form of browning. Container size. You can start off with a big container if you want with this plant. This will grow really big depending on the size of the container. Both the depth and the width of the container matters. But for now, I'm repotting this in this upcycled plastic container. Growing this in the ground will give you the best results. Potting mix. For the potting mix, you can use 30% sand, 30% compost and 40% garden soil or cocoa peat. This is a plant that can tolerate more clay soil, hence the increase in the proportion of the garden soil. So if you have an area with a lot of clay and boggy soil, you can easily grow this plant. Organic matter is important, hence adding compost is very advisable. Fertilizing. This is a hungry plant and the more you feed it, the more it will bloom. So during summer months, you can add your kitchen scraps, banana peels, compost directly onto the soil. During winter, you can reduce or stop fertilizing altogether. Pests and diseases. This is fairly pest resistant, but white flies can be a problem. They lurk under the leaves and you can spray them with neem oil pesticide regularly. Fungal infection could be a problem in plants that are constantly kept wet when there is continuous rain. The leaves may also look stressed out if you underwater the plant. You could simply cut off these not so attractive leaves and the plant will be fine. Propagation. You can propagate this easily with rhizome division. The other method is by using seeds which may not always be successful. Pruning. Pruning or deadheading the spent blooms is important to keep this blooming every time. You can cut off the spent bloom spike completely or the whole leaf section. I would advise you to do the former instead of the whole leaf. Deadheading will signal the plant to spend less time in producing seeds and more time in producing blooms. Old dry leaves must be taken out to give more growing space to the newer leaves. Cold tolerance. So for people living in frost zones, the plant will not tolerate frost. You will need to cut back the leaves completely to the ground and store the rhizome in a warm greenhouse or indoors even. You can water only when the soil dries completely. For tropical countries, nothing of this is required since they can bloom even during the winter months of November and December. But they bloom much more during spring and summer. And last but not the least, the unique feature of growing this as a semi-aquatic plant. The plant is also grown as a semi-aquatic plant and is an excellent absorber of contaminants in water bodies. 
I have seen this grown in lots of newly reclaimed lakes in my city. You can see this plant floating and absorbing contaminants from our polluted water bodies. While growing this in water, make sure you don't submerge the whole plant in water. The rhizome must be underwater and the rest of it must be above the water. Use a well-draining hydroponic mix or pond mix that you would get in the market. Growing it in the margins of the water body is advisable and do not submerge the plant in the deeper sections of the pond unless you can get those floating islands. The canna that you see here is the canna indica which is a more invasive type of canna with those honeysuckle type red blooms and I would suggest that you avoid growing this in your garden. The seeds of this plant can easily germinate in warm countries and that makes it invasive. So folks, with a combination of a stately bloom and an exquisitely designed foliar pattern, what more can a gardener ask for? With this, we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore and I really hope you enjoyed this particular tropical edition. Additionally, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are given below. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, a very warm, tropical goodbye.